Stephanie Smith. I'm with Griffin. And I'm with the self. Okay, and this is our presentation on racism in the criminal justice system. Um, and before we get, I just want you guys to pay attention to this picture we have here of this statue. It kind of represents inequality. You guys can't really see it, but she has a blindfold holding up this tool right here as far as measurement. So it's showing that, you know, things are equal and that we're blind to that. The main points that we're going to focus on today is that racism has been and, and still continues to be a major problem in our criminal justice system. What is the criminal justice system, you may ask? Um, it's a set of legal and social institutions for enforcing the criminal and law in accordance with a defined set of procedural rules and limitations. Um, the social judicial system does have three structural points, um, legal enforcement, which includes law and police, um, adjudication, which is the actual court, you know, the judge and whatnot, and corrections, which is the jails, prisons, probation, and parole. And these distinct agencies, all three of them, operate together as a principal means to maintaining the rule of law with the society. And right here we have a video of Ms. Michelle Alexander. She's an associate professor of law at the um, Montez College of Law. And this is just a video um, on racial bias in our criminal justice system. King and I'm 
turn over William to her explain it to you, Patrick. Rodney King was born April 2nd, 1965. Um, he was best known for his involvement in police brutality case in Los Angeles. Um, on March 3rd, 1991, Rodney King, he was driving one night and he was pulled over for a traffic violation. Um, once they pulled him over, they realized he was under the influence of alcohol. After um, they asked Rodney to get out, he refused to get out. And he, when he finally got out, they tased him twice. After tasing him twice, they beat him. He would try to get up, they would beat him some more. And it was a um, someone video recorded while they was um, beating him. The man, he turned it in to CNN News, and after they turned it in, they played it repeatedly. Um, on March 15th, the police officers, they were, um, they were charged for assault and for false um, report. After a month after that, they had the trial. It was in an all urban white area, and the jury, it was all white. The police, they were not guilty and after the trial it was a massive riot in Los Angeles. Um, 55 people died, 2,383 were injured and more eight, more than 8,000 was arrested and over a hundred billion dollars worth of property was damaged. And this is a video of the beat. Now the story that might never now the story that might never have surfaced if someone hadn't picked up his home video camera. We've all seen the pictures of Los Angeles police officers beating a man they had just pulled over. The city's police chief said today he will support criminal charges against some of the men. Here's ABC's Gary Shep. The three police officers facing felony criminal charges were among a group of 15 who stopped a 25-year-old black man last Saturday night, then beat him, kicked him, and clubbed him, unaware that an amateur photographer was recording the incident on videotape. Los Angeles Police Chief Darrell Gates looked at the tape and said he thinks assault with a deadly weapon will be one of the charges. In our review, we find that uh, the officers uh, struck him with batons, uh, between 53 and 56 times. Uh, one officer rendered uh, uh, six kicks and one officer one kick. Civil rights organizations say the Los Angeles Police Department has a history of brutality and misconduct that goes back a quarter of a century, including one incident that sparked the Watts riots. So far this year, there have been more than 125 complaints of police misconduct filed with watchdog organizations. We know longer want to have to wake up each morning not knowing what fear to expect next. Today, we are not sure that the police is there to protect us. But Chief Gates today called the LACD a model department and said he has no plans to resign. Gary Shepard, ABC News, Los Angeles. Uh, this is a before and after picture of MPG. Uh, we we're going to talk about discrimination in the courtroom. People who can't afford a lawyer um, are usually appointed a public defender. And um, this is a problem because most uh, people of color, minorities, are um, given a public defender because they can't afford their own lawyer. And, um, Usually with the public defender, you're found guilty because they have a very bad reputation. Um, I don't know if you all know the difference between crack cocaine and um, powder cocaine, but uh, people who deal with crack cocaine are more severely punished. Um, powder cocaine is usually more expensive and um, sold in white suburban areas. Uh, African Americans usually change powder cocaine to crack cocaine because it's less expensive, uh, but just as potent as um, powder cocaine, um, and they're usually more severely punished because they do with crack cocaine. More than 20% of black defendants in 
convicted of murdering white victims received the death penalty. Um, this is not the same for white on white crimes, uh, black on black crimes. Jury selection has a big impact on whether or not African American fans are found guilty. Like she said, um, it was an all white jury in the um, Rodney King incident, and he was, the, the police were acquitted of all charges. The same thing happened with Troy Davis. He had an all white jury, and um, he was found guilty. Um, this is just talking about the institutionalized jury selection process in the United States. Um, it allows lawyers who are prosecuting racial and ethnic minorities to disqualify other racial and ethnic minorities from the jury, ensuring that the jury is all white. We're going to move on to corrections. Uh, more than 60% of people who are, prison, are in prison now are people of color. For black males in their 20s, one in every eight is in prison or jail on any given day. Uh, in 2007, approximately 65% of inmates belong to racial and ethnic minorities. African Americans constitute for 44% of jail and prison inmates, despite the fact that they constitute only 13.1% of the entire U.S. population. Hispanics constitute 17% of the jail and prison population compared to 13.2% of what they share in the U.S. population. Studies show that African American and Hispanic offenders, particularly young male and unemployed, are more likely to than white offenders to be sentenced to prison to receive longer sentences and obtain fewer benefits from departures from sentencing guidelines. Here's just a chart um, of the 2003 through 2007 numbers you can see. Black men are among the highest incarcerated, uh, second being Hispanic and um, third being whites. Uh, it's the same thing for black women. And the reasons, um, because unemployment, first of all, high unemployment is affecting all sectors of the population in this tough economy. And African Americans are by far the hardest hit. Blacks also have lower educational uh, levels and more likely to have criminal records, which makes them less attractive to uh, job candidates. Um, so what do we do as African Americans? We find awesome ways to make money uh, to support our families, like dealing drugs and anything else that's illegal but profitable. Let me turn it over to Stephanie. With the issue that we're speaking about, of course, we took upon ourselves to place some theory to support what we're speaking of. Um, the symbolic racism theory focuses on the predictive power of beliefs about race, the, the belief of race, and the attitude that people have about it. Um, and it stems from the blend of anti-black effects and traditional values that we have. The theory is used to apply the option of social policies, and the theory supports the symbolic racism. Not the, well, the symbolic racism theory has showed that Racism in the judicial system has not yet disappeared, nor has it minimized. It's actually gotten worse, as we just saw recently with the man who, you know, was put on the death penalty and killed. As far as the media and their perspective on racism, a lot of the times when you're dealing with the media and the racism in the judicial system, minorities are always placed at the lower part and are given a bad attitude, you know, from the beginning. Um, in our society, crime in many ways are linked to the question of race and ethnicity. Race is very important, like I stated in the media, as you can see with Rodney King. He was, you know, basically embarrassed, and even though what he was put over for and this and the fourth, there was no reason why he should have been beaten the way he was. And from the media to display that as him just being a bad person, that constitutes what we're speaking of. Um, the media is known for creating a racist bias when it comes to the judicial system as well. Non-white minorities in the media are commonly portrayed as offenders. Black in particular are more likely to be judged and portrayed as a crime suspect and as a violent in the news and in the judicial system. Who cares? Prosecute, prosecution and racial justice program at the Bureau of Institution of Justice um, this program is seek to support the integrity and judicial outcomes and build public confidence in the criminal justice process. Uh, why is this program necessary? Prosecutors in the United States, uh, they have a big influence on 
making key decisions like whether to prosecute or what charges to press. Uh, the PRJ is working to sustain, to sustain the public's confidence in the prostitution process by ensuring that neither race nor ethnicity is uh, is inappropriate treatments in um, courtrooms, uh, police and prisons, probation and jails. And in conclusion, um, racial discrimination in the American criminal justice system is extremely controversial. A lot of people have their opinions on, okay, is it true or is it not, or is it just people saying, oh, you're picking on us because, you know, we're a minority. But there's theories behind it, there's evidence, the media does it, and it is a big problem. And that's why we did provide you guys with information on, you know, how to help with this and how to make a difference or try to, you know, put forth your opinion on it as well. Um, there's evidence about the effects of race of definite indecisions with the criminal justice system and individual differences among official and judicial systems do exist. And it is expected that this involved racism plays a major role in the explanation of attitudes toward policies aimed to address racial and justice systems. Thank you.